Welcome, welcome, Feng Shui friends. In this episode, we're going to talk more about wealth and abundance. I'm going to help you locate that wealth and abundance energy center in your home. Welcome to Feng Shui Living, a podcast for busy women looking to de-stress and live with more intention. I'm Lisa Morton, and I'm passionate about helping you create a home that not only inspires you, but empowers you. Years ago, I was severely struggling with my mental health and wellness, and while I'd implemented yoga, meditation, therapy, and more, I just could not find that missing piece of the puzzle. And that was until I explored my home. You see, the interior designer in me had made it beautiful, but it wasn't supporting me energetically. Fast forward, and I've now been in the interior design industry for 20 years, and I've devoted the past 10 years to feng shui and a holistic design approach. In this podcast, I'll be sharing with you interviews, stories, and knowledge, as well as some super easy, simple tips that you can take on today. If you're looking to be more intentional and create a life and home that you love, then you're in the right place. Hello, hello there, and welcome back to this episode. I'm so excited for today. I think, oh my gosh, if you loved last week's episode, you're going to be even more excited about this one. This is part two of our three-part series on manifesting money with feng shui. And I have to tell you, I've I've tried all these different cures and they work. You know, a lot of people are skeptical. And they're like, I don't get it. I don't understand, Lisa, that's too woo. What do you have to lose is what I say. I have manifested so many wonderful things, so I hope you take these on with an open mind and you experiment and play around and see what works, see what maybe doesn't, see what maybe you need to tweak, okay? So again, this is part two of our three-part series on manifesting money with feng shui. So if you missed episode one, I want you to go back because that was my episode on fast money. Fast money, if you're in a, in a bind and you need to figure something out, that is the episode for you. And I, I want you to remember that episode too, so you can reference back. Actually, this whole series is so good. So if you miss that episode, make sure you listen, okay? But today, we're gonna dive in a little more and I'm going to help you locate that energy center. So we have these nine energy centers in our home. You may have heard me talk about the Bagua map. So this is a map that helps us find those nine different energy centers. And each energy center corresponds to a different aspect of our life. And there is a wealth and abundance energy center. And so today in the podcast, I'm going to help you find it. Once you find it, then I'm going to give you all these ideas of how to activate that area to bring more wealth and abundance. And again, first episode in this series, we talked about a little bit about mindset. We're going to get into that in another episode too, because that's huge. Money, mindsets, it, you know, we can have a lot of blocks up about money. Here's what I want you to remember is that more money means you get to do more things. And that could be more volunteer time. That could be more donations to your favorite animal shelter. I mean, that's my favorite thing. I work so hard so I can help save those animals. <laughs> uh, who else is an animal lover like me? <laughs> so keep that in mind. All right. So let's jump in and find that energy center of your home. So the easiest way, the way I guide my clients to do that, this is we sketch out their floor plan. I have them sketch out their floor plan on a piece of paper. It does not have to be to scale. It does not have to be beautiful. It does not need to be artistic. We just have to have the floor plan. A bird's eye view looking down and hey, maybe if you have the builder's drawings, then you're just a step ahead and life is easier. But if you don't, you can easily sketch this out. Now, it's kind of funny to think about this. I've had a few people get really creative. I actually know a guy um, I couldn't make too much fun of him because he was my friend's husband. Actually, I did make a lot of fun of him. His name is Andrew. And I remember he used Excel to sketch out a floor plan. I'd never seen such a thing. I mean, he's super analytical, sciencey guy, right? And he used Excel to create a floor plan. I'd never in my life seen such a thing. You can just hand sketch this, okay? It does not have to be beautiful. But you're going to look at your floor plan. And it, we're going to use this approach called the three gate method. So you're going to look at your floor plan 
<clears throat> and then we'd align the bagua with the, with the bottom of your floor plan, with your front door. So how we're going to find the energy centers, I want you to imagine walking through your front door. So if you don't have a floor plan, say you're driving in the car, you're on a run, I want you to imagine walking through your front door. You just close the door behind you. You're looking towards, I'm like moving around. Hopefully it's not making the sound weird, but <laughs> hopefully you're looking towards the back of the home. I imagine looking towards the rear of the home, the front door is directly behind you. Now I want you to find the left rear corner of your home. That is your wealth and abundance energy center. Okay, now you know where it is. Think about what it is. Is it a laundry room? Is it the garage? Is it the kitchen? Because what happens in that room is also very important. But no matter what, I have amazing tools and tips and guides to help you activate that area. So of the five element system, I've talked about the five element system, the wood element really connects to this area. So any type of green plants, this is where I keep some of my plants. It's a great little air window for them to thrive in front of any type of green item or any type of vertical lines in this space. Okay, so the wood element is bring the wood element into this area, as well as the colors of blues and purples and reds. I like purple because purple feels royal, regal, very luxurious to me. I once had this like very luxurious purple robe. So I was kind of think about that. This gua is associated with prosperity, abundance, blessings, good fortune, like all those things we want. So how else can we activate it? Um, water. I have a million notes for you guys, so I don't want to comment. I'm going to reference my notes. So. <laughs> um, water. Water represents money. Okay. So water here is an excellent addition. You could place a tabletop water fountain or some sort of water feature. You could even place a water feature outside. Here's what I want you to remember. I want you to focus on the flow of that fountain flowing inward towards the house, not away from the house. We, I've seen some beautiful, beautiful fountains out in front of homes and they're, they're leading away from the home. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> we want that flowing towards the, the center of the home or towards that 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 energy center of wealth and abundance okay so water uh you can hang a cut crystal the pr beautiful prism crystals in uh, your window to increase your income uh if this is a bathroom you guys know i'm always talking about bathrooms keeping the toilet lid down okay if this is the bathroom really check in keep it tidy keep that toilet lid down make sure the plumbing is working well make sure there's no spent light bulbs next i uh, let's see uh, oh yeah yeah i told you about toilet lid down 100 percent um <laughs> and so let's get into some symbolism so if you're joining me on youtube it's kind of show and tell time i brought a bunch of stuff with me if you're not you can still listen pop back in i'll you know what i'll add some pictures of these things into my newsletter so if if you're not getting my newsletter make sure you head over to my website to sign up uh, while you're over there also sign up i'm doing free 15 minute discovery calls to so snag your discovery call let's jump into more symbolism chinese coins here we go i got a couple here chinese coins have that square cut out in the middle Hopefully it's focusing so you can see that. So you can you can place these in that energy center. Uh, do they have to be out? No, they can be in a drawer, in a dish, somewhere special, in a in a compartment somewhere. Uh, you can also you can you can buy these and add a tassel. You can buy them with beautiful red tassels and things attached to them. You can frame it, or just place it on some surface that feels appropriate. Here's what I want you to think about or look at when you're doing this, there is a yin and a yang side to the coin. So if you look at the coin, there's going to be four symbols on one side. And on the opposite side of the coin, there's going to be two. The side with the four symbols is the yang side. 
So you want that facing up. Or if it's hanging facing so it's visible. Okay? So yang side up on the coin. Uh, it's also great wealth and abundance to have three of these on the tassel. So maybe you can grab three Chinese coins. And if you guys need any support finding these types of tools, reach out. I have a huge supply, um, a kachi, or I can recommend you to find quality pieces. Okay. Next is a money toad. This was one of my favorite tools when I first got into feng shui. I thought it was so fun to experiment with money toads. So here's my money toad. I brought this little guy. It's just a little resin figurine. They might be different colors. A lot of red, right? Because red is very young. Um, I've seen them in golds and greens. And you can select whatever works for you. Uh, but it's a toad, and then there's a Chinese coin that goes in its mouth. Let's see. Sometimes it's hard to get it to stay. So again, you want it yang, side up, and you place it in its mouth. Now, my cleaning ladies are always so confused by this. You might have to just tell them. If you have little ones, they might think it's fun. My niece, Jaden, used to take the coin and hide it around the house back in the day when she was little. It was super funny. It would just laugh about it. Anyway, so you want to place this at your front door. This frog symbolizes wealth and money in more of a materialistic form, like dollar bills, okay? So you want to place them at your front door, preferably on a nice little table. I'm going to put the coin down just so, for ease of showing you. On a table um, or on a nice ledge so he's elevated, he's visible, and I want him facing inward towards the house kind of like that water fountain we want to think about abundance flowing into the house not away from it so you want him facing inward toward the house and there are other things you can do to embellish him add coins um, red strings all kinds of fun things but this is your money toad say hello to the money toad <laughs> if you are a plant lover a money tree a money tree is so fun i have a money tree in my office you guys this money tree is probably easily 12 years old. I bought it. I bought it when we moved to Willoughby, Ohio. Maybe that's more than 12 years. It's got to be more than 12 years. And this guy, he was three feet tall. And now he's probably five. He's huge. <laughs> he has just grown tall. And I've had to braid the branches a little more. But a money tree or a Malabar chestnut. Now, I'm not going to try and pronounce the scientific name because I know I will butcher it. But a Malabar chestnut or a money tree. A lot of people know if you're popping into a plant store, they're going to know a money tree. So snag one of those. They grow tall. They're beautiful. The other option that I love is a jade plant. There's a saying, jade by the door, pour no more. If you look at a jade, it has those thick, um, kind of juicy leaves. And they, if you look at them, they're round. They kind of look like a coin, don't they? So jade plants are, um, again, I am not going to attempt to pronounce the scientific name, but <laughs> they're excellent for, for attracting wealth and prosperity. Um, you can place, I, I love jade by the front door, but you can also place these in your wealth and abundance area to, to activate that area. Um, if, let's see, if you're looking for another plant, it doesn't have to be these. I mean, these are best for, they, they connect directly to money, right? They look like coins or they're, they, they're called a money tree. But if you say want to do something else, maybe a, a peace lily, because you're just really drawn to a peace lily. Like I have a peace lily that I really love um, that was from my grandmother's funeral. And so it's so special to me. So maybe you have a plant like that. You can place that in your wealth and abundance area. Or, hey, it's an excuse to go get some new plants or at least a new plant. I want you to remember that they need to have soft, rounded leaves. When selecting a plant, always opt for soft, rounded leaves and try to steer, steer away from anything too pointy, especially cacti. Cacti are cool, but they're not good feng shui. Next, uh, we touched on this briefly, is water fountains, indoor fountains. They can be the small little tabletop ones. They can be 
you know, I, I had a client not too long ago. We did this huge, I don't know, was it like four foot fountain in their home? And it was slate. It was beautiful, right? These, this water invites in wealth and abundance. You can place wealth and, uh, I'm sorry, you can place a fountain in that area. Um, you can also add images or artwork of, of water. Maybe you have a favorite water, I don't know, fishing hole you go to. <laughs> I mean, I was really pulling for that one. Um, or maybe there's a favorite beach you like to go visit and you love the water and you have a beautiful image of it. Place this here. Place this in your wealth and abundance area. <clears throat> Next is fish. If you like the images of fish, maybe a cool goldfish or something, um, or some sort of tropical fish, fish represent water. Um, it's most connected to income and wealth. So maybe a fish tank. If you're a fish person, put a fish tank here. Put artwork, images showing fish. Um, I had a note here. The Chinese word for fish, I'm going to guess it's pronounced you. Mm, we'll try. It actually means abundance. So, and having fish symbols bestows abundance to those who display them. So, let's display some fish to bring in more wealth and abundance. Now, you might have some personal items too. Some personal items that mean wealth and abundance to you. So, the, I just went over some of my favorite tools and tools and tricks and things to implement. But... What does wealth and abundance mean to you? So this could be a really good journaling prompt. What does wealth and abundance, does it mean luxury in the form of X, Y, Z? Does it mean like beautiful sparkly jewelry? Does it mean drinking champagne? I don't know. Think about what luxury and wealth means to you. And see if you have trinkets, you have things, you have things floating around your house. You can even have, I have some really fun, here's here's a little thing I, I'll share with you. I have some really fun costume jewelry that came from my husband's grandmother. I never met the woman, but she was, I hear she was a very fancy lady. She loved her jewelry. She loved getting dressed up and she had all this fun costume jewelry. So in, after years, years, years after she'd passed, my mother-in-law and um, my my husband's aunts had had all this jewelry out. Well, you know, any of the girls could have what they want just because it's fun, right? And so I grabbed some of these pieces just you kind of just for more to to kind of just have of my husband's grandmother, you know, and to kind of think of this woman. I never met her, but you know, it's just neat to connect with her. And all of a sudden, it hit me. I'm like, oh my gosh! One day, I need, like I need to put this jewelry. It's sitting in a box. I'm not using it. I'm not really wearing it because it isn't really costume jewelry like I would wear. So, but it does. It just oh, it screams luxury and fancy woman. So I place those in a beautiful dish in my wealth and abundance qua. So it could be something personal for you. Okay. Um, you can also. I've had clients, we've done a money jar. Take a jar and add some money in. And that's where, you know, add add a $100 bill in and like store it in there. Or maybe to a place you want to add some coins every day. Empty your pocket and fill the jar up. Uh, so many fun things you can do. I hope this these tips inspired you to, to have some fun with this area. Really energize this area. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pull out your calendar, pull up your phone, and I want you to find a date where you might implement, maybe today, maybe you're going to go home tonight and implement some of these things. Maybe you're going to wait till the weekend, but I want you to pick a day to implement, and then I want you to mark six weeks from, this, from the day you implement these items. And I want you to come back in six weeks and see what has changed in your life. Better yet, I don't have, I don't think I have a printout. I'm going to make one. I'm going to make a guide for you guys that's very similar to what I use with my clients. And we'll keep track of all those cool things that we manifest, all the financial abundance that flows towards us during these six weeks and how it builds and builds. And you will, your mind will be blown. I have no doubt. <laughs> Well, friends, that is all for today. 
Again, if you missed that first episode, go back to the first episode and listen about fast money, right? Those are more fast, quick, get the energy flowing, get the energy moving. These are other amazing tips and a lot of really powerful symbolism to bring into your space. So I hope you'll join me for episode three of this feng shui, manifesting money with feng shui little series. I think it's awesome. And I know you're going to have fun implementing this. I'll see you next time, friends. I'd like to thank our production company, Garagio Media, the WELT 95.7 Studios, and our sponsor, Good Chi. For more information, follow the link in the show notes. Be sure to hit like, hit the subscribe button, and leave us a five-star review. If you want to connect, find us on Facebook, and be sure to let me know what topics you'd like to hear about. Thank you so much for listening. See you next time.